Today we're in section 5.5, dividing fractions. In our textbook on page 243. Everybody ready? Okay, so this first slide, you don't need to uh, write anything down. I just want to kind of review over some things with you. That two non-zero number, non numbers whose product is one, those are called reciprocals. And under in the blue chart underneath, we see some examples of that. For example, the number five, if I were to flip that fraction, I know that it can be five over one, I flip it to one over five, and yes, if I multiply five times one-fifth, my answer is one. Same thing goes with a true fraction, two over seven times seven over two, again, is one. Even if it's negative, negative five-fifths times negative eight over five is, again, one. And it even works with decimals. Okay, so with decimals in place value, I look at the place value of my last decimal. The one is in what place? The tenths place, so I would multiply it by 10 to clear the decimal, and again, my answer is one. So let's say I had a decimal value of uh, this. I put another one afterwards. What do you think you would have to multiply it by to clear it? 100. 100, okay? Because now the last number is in the hundredths place, so you would multiply by 100 to clear it. What if I had another one? What if it was three ones? Then I need to multiply it by 1,000, okay? So depending on how many place values you have in your decimal will depend on how many uh, powers of 10 you need to multiply it by to clear your decimal. All right, we'll talk more about that tomorrow, but that's our lesson tomorrow, clearing decimals and fractions in order to solve equations. All right, so this whole concept of reciprocals is really important. All right, so in example one, I'm dividing a fraction. All right, I have negative two-fifths divided by four-sevenths. Go ahead and write that down. Negative two-fifths divided by four-sevenths. And I'm going to use, uh, this is a method that is oftentimes taught um, in lower grades, the KFC method. KFC method to, what does K stand for? Keep the first fraction. What does F stand for? Flip the second fraction. What about C? Change the sign. Change the sign. So we're going to follow, K is keep. Keep the first fraction, flip the second fraction, change the sign to multiplication. And now I can look to cross-reduce. Can I cross-reduce anything? What can I cross-reduce? Negative two, okay, so LJ got it right on the head right there. He said negative two, okay? Negative two reduces to negative one. It's important for us to keep the negative even in the reduced value because that reminds us that there's a negative there, all right? Otherwise, it's very easy to forget about it, all right? So that reduces to two, so I end up with negative seven tenths, all right? I want you to try the next two now on your own, okay? So you're going to do the reciprocal, uh, multiply by the reciprocal of your second fraction, KFC. All right, so we have negative three-fourths times eight-fifths. We cross-reduce, and we get negative six-fifths, which is negative one and one-fifth. All right, the third one is even more basic, right? Because I just I just flipped the second one, and it's 11 over 20. There's no cross-reducing or anything. I just multiply. All right, who got those right? Both of them. Okay, very good. All right, so that's example one. Now in example two, I'm going to use um, the same concepts, the same rules to multiply mixed, or I'm sorry, not multiply, but to divide mixed numbers. Now, does anybody remember, what do we talk about? What do we do to mix numbers before? Yes, we make them all improper. We show, now, on this one, after we make them improper, we have to remember to flip the second fraction, cross-reduce, and solve. So go ahead and start that conversion to an improper fraction.
Okay, so on the first one, we changed to improper. All right, and I kept a division because I have not yet done the reciprocal of the second fraction. I just needed to convert it. Oh, and I want to take a minute, too, to remind you that the negative is not involved in the conversion. Okay, so 1 times 3 is 3 plus 2 is 5. I don't do negative 1. Then I just bring over the negative into my second fraction, which I guess I forgot to do, but that's negative 5 over 3. All right, so now I need to do the reciprocal 25 over 6 now times negative 3 over 5. I need my negative there too. All right, so now I cross reduce. Can I cross reduce anything? Have you already done this part? Okay, so cross reduce 25 and 5 to 5 and 1, and negative 3 and 6 to 1 and 2. Oh, wait, what did, did I forget something there? What did I forget? The negative with a 1. And guys, I'm telling you, I actually forgot this one earlier today. All right, so it's very easy to forget if you don't put that negative in. And then once you um, multiply and convert, you end up with negative two and a half. All right, questions. Who got two, negative two and a half? Who got that? All right, now I want you to do the second one completely on your own, okay? So I kind of took you through the first one step by step. We convert it to an improper fraction. Then we flip the second fraction. Then we cross reduce. Then we multiply. All right, so there are multiple steps here that we just kind of follow one by one. Um, this is the second one. So now we convert it to improper. We flip our second fraction. Did you get this far? Convert to improper, flip the second fraction to multiply. Did y'all get this? Negative 49 over 8 times 4 over 21. Now we're going to do quite a bit of cross-reducing here. 4 and 8 cross-reduce. Negative 49 reduces to negative 7 over 3, and then 3 on the other side. And then when I multiply, I end up with a mixed number, negative 1 and 1 6. Who got it? Negative 1 and 1 6. Okay, so that's more. That's more. That's good. Do you see where you went wrong if you missed a spot? Okay, see where you went wrong? Uh, we're not going to do the third one. All right, moving on now to example 3. Um, example three is a word problem. So I need to figure out what information here is actually relevant to solving the problem. All right, so um, in your classwork example two, it gives you actually more information than you need. Okay, so keep that in mind as we're reading the problem. You want to join strips of wood that are 15 inches long and one and five eighths inches wide to make a cutting board that is at least 12 inches wide. How many strips do you need? All right, so again, like I said, there's more information here than I need. What information in this problem do you think would not be needed in order to figure out how many strips of what I need? Okay, why do you say 15, TJ? Because it's long and it's asking about width. Very good. I wanna know how wide basically i'm making it 12 inches wide i want to know how how many strips i need to make it 12 inches wide i don't care about how long it is okay um as far as 15 inches long okay well that's fine that's all of the strips of wood are 15 inches long so that's not a problem so 15 inches is not going to be used in solving this all right so i need to divide 12 divided by the width of one strip to figure out how many strips i need well, if I'm dividing a whole number, um, or, yeah, in this case, a whole number and a mixed number, what do I need to do first? I heard change it. it change it to improper. All right, so we go ahead and change it to improper. Now, I want you to continue to solve it. Go ahead and get all the way to your answer. So we finish it up, and we go back to a mixed number, and it says we need 7 and 5 13 strips of wood. So if you were now thinking of this in terms of answering, when you're going to the store, okay, how, how many strips of board do you need to buy? 18. Yeah, you can go up to the, uh, to the customer service person and say, okay, I need seven and five thirteens boards. They're going to say, okay, well, you got to buy eight boards then, right? So eight boards is the answer, all right? So... In these word problem scenarios, we have to figure out, okay, this is my exact answer, but 
how much do I need to actually build this or make this or whatnot. So you have a classwork problem that, that's just like this. All right, so now we're in one more example, and this uh, has to do with order of operations. You saw some of these on your homework last night, too, where you actually have multiple steps going on here. You see what? What do you see here as my first step in order of operations? What do you see here? Parentheses. I need to solve what's in parentheses, and there's subtraction. So I cannot simply subtract these numbers because what do I need? An LCD. Go ahead and find your LCD and change your fractions. Okay, so I find my LCD, and I have to convert my first fraction. Did you get 8 over 18? Did you convert it? Do you see how I got 8 over 18? Because 18 is my LCD. We changed my color. Um, so 18 is my LCD. So how do I get from 9 to 18? I multiply by 2, so I multiplied 4 by 2. All right? So now what's 8 minus 3? 5. So now I'm dividing 5 ninths divided by 5 over 18. You see how I got there? Now what do I do? Not yet. I flip it. I flip the second fraction. Oh, man, I love it when this happens after you flip it. Now what happens? You, like, cancel, like, everything, right? So your 5s cancel down to 1. Your 9 cancels down to a 1. 18 cancels down to 2, and your answer is 2. All right, so that one worked out really nice, but it's just that multi-step order of operations type of problem. All right, and if you understand that, that's everything you need to know for 5.5.